All right, Connor and Artem. Where are you guys at on this? Because I happen to remember it. So, Artem is suing Connor, and it's over the whiskey deal, proper 12. And Artem is suing Connor, and there was a percentage. I think it was 5%. But I don't know what that is. I've, I've never been told that. Because Connor did not own that company. Connor was an owner in the company. I know that, that got presented a little bit different, but Connor was an owner in the company. He had partners. So I don't, I don't know if Artem is going just after Connor's side of it or after the whole bit. I don't know that that matters. I'm just sharing for you as I'm discussing numbers for you and I'm not producing all of the relevant numbers. It's because I don't have them, but Artem has decided that he wants 5%. I don't think that Artem has a bad claim, by the way. But just so you understand what happened here, we discussed this. Or I apologize. They discussed this a meaningful amount of time ago. I read it and I remember it. I remember it perfectly without even looking it up. At least what was reported. Now, I fully admit for you, if Artem told a reporter and the reporter came and told the world just, just then, just that separation, we don't have the story correctly. So I'm going to report the way that it was reported, which is correct enough to let you know the finer points, which is the whiskey idea was Artem's idea. Artem took that to Connor. Whatever that means, whatever that looked like, he went to Connor. Artem had the idea. Okay, when the whole thing gets done, and Connor and Artem were very close, and they were very good training partners as well. So when Artem would have a camp. Connor would help him. Now Artem is doing a lot smaller fights, and they're you know I'm not, I'm, we're not you're not spreading the butter around to all of the training partners. It's just not the way it works. Well, when he got to Connor's level, Connor did, and that really is a generous move more than that is a, a built-in standard of our industry. Just so you know, I mean I think that Connor has demonstrated many times a very generous guy, and from a legal perspective. That isn't going to play in, but they're also doing this in the court of public opinion. And I think that Connor and his, and his generosity and his known generosity, I think that it is relevant to this as I get a little further. So point that I'm getting at, Connor would pay Artem, Artem would not pay Connor. That's for training. Artem would never accept. Everybody would accept. Everybody would accept and you'd be excited. I tell, I'll throw you in that. I, I never got paid to be a training partner. Boy, if I did, if I got a check, oh, that would have been exciting. Real exciting. But and Artem said no, just didn't think it was right. That's 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 my friend. That's my teammate. That's what we do. I'm glad he's having success, but he's returning and paying me back in kind. We're square. And that's pretty cool by Artem. I mean, I'll I'll share with you that whatever that money was, 1500 bucks, 2500 bucks, it wasn't going to change Connor's day at all, and it could have really helped Artem. So this this was a principled decision. I'm just sharing it with you. That's just kind of what their relationship was. So somewhere this whiskey deal came up, and when the whole thing got done, as I understood the story, when the whole thing got done, Connor shows up to Artem and hands him a check. Just hands him a check. And it's for a million dollars. And Connor just said, thank you. He, we, he, was, he was conceding to Artem. You were a genesis of this idea, or you helped with this idea, or you incurred. There was something from Connor where he was trying to say thank you. And a million dollars is a very big thank you. Can we agree? Artem did not accept. Now, again, it was, it was principled. And this is the article. This is the article from years ago that I'm referencing off the top of my head, but I got a memory like that. You can count on me for these things. And Artem had compared the million dollar whiskey check to the checks that were coming in for training, which is, I'm your friend. This is what we do. If I gave you a good idea, that was my point. And somewhere down the road, if you can give me one back, that's just what, we're, we're friends. It was a cool move by Artem. I remember thinking it was a cool move when he read it. And I, I remember trying to follow the golden rule of life of put yourself in somebody else's shoes. What would you do? I would have taken the money. I absolutely would have taken the money. And I would not have felt ashamed. I would have felt like I earned it, right? If I gave a guy an idea. And I don't know what level Artem did. 
at this point, I don't know what level he did, and I thought it was very minimal, something along the lines of there at practice, you got you got a few minutes to socialize. The best part of practice, right? You go torture yourself for an hour and a half just to visit with the boys before and after. And somewhere in this, Artem tells him, hey, you know, this whiskey's catching on, the Irish thing, and you, and why don't you put them together and go get a whiskey deal? I thought it was about that much, and that was all. And years later, Connor came with a million-dollar check. Well, Artem is weighing in on that, and it's not quite what I think. Artem did some massive leg steps. And it is very relevant as to when did Artem come in on this idea. If he's in at the absolute beginning, if you can tie it back, and Artem is the genesis for this. There is a standard pay that comes along with that. And you can break that up into a couple of different categories. You can even call it a broker's deal. Now, there's another side, which is if something is not discussed, right? I mean, there's a lot of ideas out there, and it's really hard. If you're somebody that's vetting ideas, but you're an entrepreneur, you're always looking for something new, it's, it's a very slippery slope. It really is. I think I shared with you guys a story about Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro in California, he doesn't drive, won't drive himself anywhere. Well, people thought, what an out-of-touch guy. Well, no, it, it, it actually had to do with legal reasons in case he were to hit somebody. It's just much safer if he has somebody else driving. And one small, small story, but when he would go places, he would go with an assistant, and that included a restaurant. So if the waiter would come over and say, how do you like your steak? Robert De Niro would turn to the assistant and say, medium rare. The assistant would then say it to the waiter. People thought he was out of touch. Well, it had turned out that many years before, somebody had done just this. Somebody came and gave him some kind of an idea that he did nothing with. Didn't remember that person. It it wasn't a meaningful thing. It wasn't even a conversation that he wanted to be part of. And years later, he made a movie that had that idea, and that person came back. And that is a very tough spot. I mean, let's say that Connor was vetting all sorts of ideas and he was looking into the whiskey or, you know, 10 people a day tell him something. I mean, you, you, you don't even want it. You're getting unsolicited advice. But some of those you do go vet and then some of them do turn into something. What if those person could all come back and stick it on? You'd be in a little bit of a hard spot where you turn your head and go, well, geez. So Robert De Niro, actually, you just put a buffer in. Don't say anything to me. Nobody say anything to me ever again. Don't give me an idea. Don't give me anything. And it all started to make a little bit more sense. And I bring that story, and I think that it's very relevant. Because who knows what Connor's perception of that was, right? Connor's always out looking for something. He's an entrepreneur. I mean, imagine if somebody came to Dana and go, hey, I'm suing you. I want 5%. Well, what for? They said, well, we're doing the MMA deal. I, t- I told you to do that. That would be a really hard spot. You told me to do it. Well, you didn't tell me how to do it. Do you know how many numbers have to work out here? Do you know the risk? Do you know the hard work? Do you know the likability of this coming through? Oh, and by the way, it did. We obviously did something right. All you did was say the idea. I mean, right, I feel like it needs to go two ways. If Connor had lost $600 million, is Artem in the mind of, I need to give you 5% of that loss? That's the litmus test. I'm talking about from an ethics standpoint. If from an ethical standpoint, yes, that is his perspective. He thought he was involved. He thought he was a part of it. Now, you see where Artem's going to run that bank. Well, first off, I can't cover the spread. But secondly, Connor, I didn't tell you to go spend $30 million on marketing. I didn't tell you to do these things, right? Well, you see where it becomes a problem. The same things that Connor did that worked out would be the things that turned out to be a problem. And I had this happen to me with a very good friend who I haven't spoken to. His decision, not mine, had to do with Submission Underground. And he says, hey, I'm a partner. We created that together. I'm looking to go, whoa, hey, I got to stop you right there. I I didn't create grappling. If you created grappling, you didn't do it with me because I I sure as hell didn't do it. Got all the things that got lost, it got turned around. But it was, it was just an interesting spot. And I didn't think that he was totally wrong. I, I would have liked to visit with him, but I, I was never given the opportunity. And I share this now because Artem is coming out. He's got, he's got a different story than one that I perceived. He's saying, no, man, I really did, did some groundwork. I went and met with the distillers. I got this up and going. I brought it to Connor and said, man, this is, this is a done deal. I would like my compensation for it. And I, I think that he's in a, an interesting spot 
only because Connor had brought him a million dollars. And Artem is now saying, from a perspective of, I turned that away because it wasn't enough. I didn't accept that. I was not going to accept that I was only worth a million dollars. And that is a very different vibe than I got from the article I read years ago where it was, no, you're my buddy. I'm, I'm only sharing with you. I, I, I'm not coming out and telling you that I think Artem is wrong. I think that it's an interesting standpoint. So what does Connor do? Okay, now I'm backing you up two weeks. Connor comes up on social media, tells me, tells him, meet me down at the gym, right? They're teammates at SPG. Meet me down at the gym. We'll fight for the whole, the whole damn thing right now, tonight. Whatever it is you think you're owed, we, I will fight you for it tonight. I beat you. Don't bring it up again. You beat me. I hand you a check. It wasn't just tough talk. Connor was serious. He'd have brought his checkbook with him and he would have gone down and done that. But any way that you want to look at that, whether you think that's a cute line, a funny line, whatever you think that is, it could not clearer be, it couldn't clearer, there wouldn't be a clearer definition of intimidation of a witness. It, it, you couldn't have a clear one. I remember when I, when I saw, I, I got a little chuckle and I thought, God damn, Artem might go do it. That's a $30 million fight. Artem is probably going to go down to the gym and do it, right? I remember having it from that standpoint. Then I remember slowing down a little bit and going, hey, if you're Connor's lawyer, you're swallowing real deep right now. This is not, this is not good. And I came and talked to you guys about that, right? This is a couple of weeks ago. We're just sitting up here gossiping a little bit. Two of us in some window sheen. We're over here gossiping about these guys in Ireland. Well, it comes out today, sure as hell. Artem has filed a new lawsuit, and this time it's for intimidation. That's going to be a very hard one to get around. When it's a tweet in writing. Now, you know where Connor's mindset is. Hey, this is what we do. Me and this guy have gone down to that very gym, and we've done this very thing for the last 12 years. Tonight, we're doing it for $30 million. I'm just sharing with you, see where Connor would not have been thinking that way, but you also see how it's in black and white. You have a three-time world champion. Thinks he's a two-time world champion. I watched him. I watched him win the interim belt. You have a three-time world champion. Challenging you to an ass-whipping contest. You can see where that's going to hold up as intimidation. Where does that go from here? I don't know, man. I think they should settle, and they should settle fast. I really think that. It's going to be on principle. They're going to be, they're going to be angry. There's emotions involved here. I hope they get it worked out. And I do hope that Artem is a meaningful amount. I give Connor credit. If we're, if we're just talking public opinion here, I give Connor credit for bringing that million bucks. He sure didn't mean that as an insult. He wasn't trying to get him to accept it so I don't have to give him the, the full thing. Ah, Connor's mind wouldn't have been there at all. Did a good thing for me. Took care of me. I, I want to do it back. Here's what I've got right now. We took big risks. We did big work. I went all over the world, media and marketing. I blew, I blew this thing. I took massive risks. You had a thought and you shared it with me. It was a great thought and I appreciate it, but you didn't take any risk. You didn't have any actual... I've been, do, I've been doing this for four years to get this thing done. I'm not saying you didn't spend four hours on it. I'm not even saying you didn't spend four days on it. But you didn't spend over that. Here's a million dollars. I don't know where this is going to go. I'm just giving you the pieces. It's solid gossip. How much of that story that I just told you is accurate? For, for sure, there's pieces missing. I gave you a very accurate depiction of what's being reported by the media. I just, I, I know what to expect from the media. Everybody, everybody in the world, doesn't matter where you go. First day of law school, every professor will tell the same story to those students, which is about the time a cop pulled a drive over and said, you've been drinking. And the driver responded, I've been drinking, and the cop wrote that down. He didn't write that it with, was a question mark due to the guy's tone. He wrote down that the guy said, I've been drinking. I have my confession.
I'm sharing with you, that's what you have to do with the media. So when I got a little part of that wrong or, or Artem seeing that and he's getting ready to call me, go ahead and call. I'd rather have it right than wrong. But I'm report. I'm, I'm gossiping about it the way that it was reported and I'm going to continue to. I think it's an interesting story. When more breaks, we'll discuss it then too.